guys, welcome to Challenge Accepted. I'm Afmal, and as always, I am joined by Sacha Lancaster. Hey. Hey, what's going on? I'm, I'm Sacha, that's Caster. Yeah, no, I did that out of order. I got excited. <laughs> Sorry. I, yeah. I'm Caster, that was Sacha. Yep. Kind of got a little mixed up there, but that's okay, that's okay. So today, guys, we are going to be talking about our experience at PAX Prime 2013. It was our very first PAX that we have ever attended. And overall, we just wanted to share our experience with you guys uh, and basically give you the inside scoop on what happened there. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. And and crowded. Uh. (laughs) And very, very crowded. I have to say, the overall experience made up for the <laughs> amount of people that were there. I just don't like crowds. It's my thing. Don't have yeah. very much fun with it. So There was only like 20 or 30,000 people. It's not that much. <laughs> there were uh, like 100,000 <laughs> yeah. people, man. There, there were, were like 20,000 people, people in a 10-foot radius of me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was very crowded. And a lot of these people, uh, it was funny because I was talking to one of the attendees about how I wasn't very fond of the people kind of just, you know, standing in the middle looking oblivious. That was me. At everything. Yeah, exactly. That was you. Mm-hmm. And the guy was like, well, you know, a lot of these people haven't left their rooms and seen the light of day <laughs> for like years. I was like, I guess, I guess. Yeah, for a lot of people, this is the first time they've seen other people playing the same game. So yeah, which, it's kind of which, a shock. Kind of nerving for me, actually, because it's like, oh, I'm playing this demo on a huge screen that everyone can watch. I better not make any mistakes. <laughs> no pressure I, I at all. I don't understand. I don't understand how that is so nerving to you when you make videos and play like in front of thousands of They're people. They're not watching me play <laughs> at the same time. It's totally different. Like if I were in yeah, that line and I had already played the game and someone was doing so, I was like, no, no, you gotta pick up, pick up that flute. No. <laughs> Turn around! Oh, you're just killing me. No, like, I would stop have just, dying. Like, right, I would have talked <laughs> to them the whole time. It would have been awful. Yeah, I can completely understand where you're coming from there. Yeah. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the games that we actually got to play. Yeah. Uh, a big one that we got to play, or we got to demo, was Pokemon X and Y, which was awesome. Ciao. I've got a huge smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone just got a huge smile on their face. But yeah, X and Y was amazing. The diagonal movement, I was just, I just, a <laughs> tear just went down my face. Uh huh. Yeah. It was That's nice. the first time. Yeah, so I we just... pretty much all got a, like, what was it? It was like a five minute demo, something like Seven that. Seven minute demo. Seven minutes, all right, on the um, <clears throat> on 3DS. Yeah. And it was pretty much, you get to walk around, catch Pokemon. Um, do some of the battling, uh, battling, uh, you can jump on the Pokemon, which I had seen it before, but when yeah. you actually get to jump on a Pokemon and ride him around, when you it ride is the by goat far the interesting. In the square, yeah. which apparently yeah. goats, I didn't know, couldn't climb stairs, also. Yeah, yeah, like, you, cl- you get on him, and you can go in the little circular path, but he but, cannot go upwards. And that's it, you're like, this is awesome, I'm in a three foot <laughs> square now. <laughs> That's it's great. Now, that depends. Was it a mountain goat or a stair goat? Because if it was a mountain goat, I can completely understand. What? No. That, <laughs> did you? Oh, boy. Never. Whatever. I think you've been watching Another way too many cartoons. Another interesting feature about Pokemon X and Y that I really liked was basically like the Tamagotchi kind of uh, feel where you got to interact with your Pokemon and basically make them love you more and you could <laughs> feed your Pokemon and pet them and their little heads would move like a cat. Yeah, so, and like, my Pokemon you them under the chin. let me stop petting it. I was like, okay, I'm petting you. And it was like, no, keep keep petting me, man. And I was like, okay, I'll keep petting you. And then I stop. It's like, no, I mean, like, keep, just don't stop petting me. And I'm like, well, you, you're a Pokemon, okay. So, yeah. like, another yeah. cool thing was that we got the three starters and Sylveon. Yeah, well, yeah, every, that's right. Yeah, but that's right. Whatever. I really just liked the fire starter. That was my Finnegan? favorite. Yeah. Absolute favorite. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it looks the best, yeah. honestly. Well, it's like it's fox. It's a fox. I like foxes, so that's just it. I'm going with yeah. that one. I picked that one first. I called it dibs. <laughs> that's it. No one else in the world. I drew a picture world. of it. I drew a picture of it, so I'm a bigger Ooh. fan than you. It doesn't matter. I dibsed it. Do you know how? Well, I'm dibs drawing. <laughs> I'm drawing another picture of it then. That will make it super dibs. What? He <laughs> has dibs. Af. He has dibs yeah. on the Pokemon. Although, right. So, but apart from. X and Y. The game that I can't stop thinking about is Transistor, which, did you guys get a chance to play it? 
Mm, no, no, I saw the line, oh and I was already God. in another line. Yeah. Guys! <laughs> like, okay, so it's done by Supergiant Games, who did Bastion, like, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, pretty much the same. That, like, you look at it, and you're like, oh, that's a visually interesting game. And you're like, I'll give it a try. And then you go at it, and you're like, oh, and the voice acting is just outright amazing. And, like, it's just so expressive and empathetic and you're like I am in love with you game <laughs> it's like it's not like this kind of like attraction it's like all out and out love you're like I just I'm in love with you I okay do whatever you do I'll or say I'll do it I don't I don't care whoa, whoa, look whoa, you should have played this game up. it was amazing it was so freaking good I, I like to think that you think of this game at night and just just, just <laughs> oh my gosh just never mind nope that's the game I can't wait for at this point. It looks so good. I so want to play it. You know, it's funny because I saw some cosplayers there cosplaying from that game. Yeah. And Bastion. Doing Yeah, someone was doing Bastion. I saw someone else doing Red, who was the protagonist mm-hmm. from that. And it's just, yeah. It's going to be, yeah. That's the one. Um, In love. For me, the game that I'm looking forward to that didn't have a demo at PAX was Mugenics. Which it was it's by the creators of Super Meat Boy and the Binding of Isaac. Right. Uh, Team Meat, in other words. Yeah. And uh, it's it looks amazing. And the little comic book they gave you was just hilarious because they give you profiles and stuff like that. Right. And then they give you like horrible cat puns and stuff but like that. But that's like, just the reason. That was the only reason you were like, the cats, I'm doing it, cats. <laughs> and then you wouldn't leave us alone. You're like, hey, have you well, heard about this game? It's about cats. Well, honestly, I heard about it a long time ago, and I've been waiting to see, like, more... It, it's, like, you go to their website, it still says that it's, like, not exactly uh, near d- close to completion, but it's on its way there. And pretty much, Eugenics is, it's, like, the way to describe it, it's a cross between The Sims, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, and some Tamagotchi. It's a little crazy. So if you like those games, I'm pretty sure you'll like Eugenics, but it's just pretty... It's all out there, and I can't wait to play an actual demo of it. It uh, it sounds pretty amusing. Yeah, it's just the title is the only interestingly. It's just interesting. That's yeah, it's just, a pun. Yeah, but it's like it's it's like such as like oh I get it's, it that's intriguing. it's the darkest pun ever. Yeah, it's just like all right. Well, also, anyone listening to this, you have to go to the Facebook and check out Casper and Mao's mugenics picture. Oh, I yeah. love that picture. We Don't even pictures. tell them what it's about. Like, Don't even tell them what it's about. Though we were what we did Strider also it was another uh-huh. one, and I ended up wearing the Strider <laughs> handkerchief mask like for the rest of packs. You reminded me of Jet from Wild Arms with that on for some reason. I never played Wild Arms. Wild Arms is amazing, but that wasn't at PAX, and that's an old game, so we'll talk about that later. Right, um, oh, uh, we also got to see... Oh, Sage, I'm sorry, you have another chance. Uh, <laughs> Sage is like, ah! Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm not used to talking without a video game in my face. I know, um, right? This is kind of different. We're just talking, like, in the, to the mic. Well, as far as games we played that really stood out and really looking forward to, um, I'm going to have to go with Crypt of the Necro Dancer. It's, um, I, w- I spent a lot of my time in the indie booths because I just love them. They're amazing, and you get to meet all the people who made them right there. Um, so basically, it's ba- it's like a dungeon crawl game. You know, you get to move around and kill stuff and get loot. But the catch is there's this beat playing constantly, and you have to actually move the character to the beat. So if you're on the keyboard, it's just arrow keys. That's the only button. It's the four arrow keys, and you got to hit the arrow keys to the beat. But the greatest thing ever was at the booth, they had a Dance Dance Revolution pad. And you can actually jump on it and play it that way. It was That's just awesome. so much fun. Where did yeah. you get that from? The Museum of Ancient Video Games? Not that <laughs> old, man. <laughs> well, every, I'm, I'm telling you, DDR pads are going to skyrocket now. Maybe mm-hmm. like 10 bucks extra. <laughs> um, but the cool <laughs> thing about it, what I'm really looking forward to is, um, like a lot of games now, they use that kind of feature. You can import your own songs. So when that comes out, you, just throw, you can throw DDR songs on it and play that is DDR be songs. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then you have on the screen your character moving around and killing stuff. It is yeah. the best combination of things that I love. Man. Wow. I'm getting that. I'm totally getting that. I'm getting eight. Yeah. I'm getting eight. The other thing that was great in the Mega Booth was oh, damn it, now I cannot. The Stanley Parable. That was it. 
which I don't think I tried that. It is just one of those other ones. Like Bastion was known for its like really interesting and creative narration, and Stanley Parable is basically the same kind of a. If, if basically it's the same approach, where it's like this really interesting and um, it just sort of polygenetic. If I'm even, I made up the word. I don't even know if that's right now. But <laughs> that's like, right. I, I believe it. Um, kind of narration where it's like, oh, and your character went left, and you instead go right, and the narrator's like, this was obviously the wrong way to go, and the character knew that. And it's like, that's, it's just like, it's so well, it's like everything was thought up. Even when you cock it up and do the wrong thing and disobey the rules, it's like, yeah, we knew you were going to do that. So it's like, even when you're cheating or like not playing the game, you are playing the game. But the narrator is just this like erudite British British guy. And you're like, yeah, I I really like your voice. You're cool. (laughs) British people always tend to have like really nice accents. And you're like, oh, I could listen to you all day. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's just like, "Eh, man, it's awesome. So that's the one I'm really looking forward to as well. Like in the Indie Mega Booth, that was another one of my favorites. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Speaking of British people, Uh-oh. some of us here met some British people. What? Yeah. Who, who well, did not, I meet? Not me. Aff, did... Aff and Caster met some British people. I met a British yeah. person. We met some really interesting people. We actually met some <laughs> other YouTubers. We met a uh, Total Biscuit. That's uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we did do that, didn't we? <laughs> we met Total Biscuit, yeah. and uh, we got a picture with him, and he blinked in the picture. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's pretty awesome. We're going to be putting that up soon, so keep a look on, look on the Facebook for that. Mm-hmm. Um, we also met uh, a lot of people from the Game Station Network, or the Polaris no, Network, whichever you want to say. Polaris, it's Polaris, um, yeah. Yeah, Polaris, it's Polaris. Whichever one. Polaris now. Whichever one you want to say, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it, everyone has their own, whatever. Um, so, we also met Jesse Cox and Dodger. Mm-hmm. All of which and, were very fun. Yeah, they and were. We really actually got a chance to talk nice. to Jesse Cox. Yeah, they were. They yeah. were really, really nice. And Dodger um, is sh- short, which... Right, which everyone forgets and doesn't know. Yeah, it's weird. I had no idea, and I was like... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, she said it before on her uh, videos because I had watched one of her videos, and I honestly, uh, we went to the TGS podcast that night, and I honestly wanted to go up there and ask her. I need to know who's shorter, me or you, because I was wearing <laughs> high heels when I met her, so I was obviously taller. <laughs> but I was like, I need to know. Like, can we just do like a measurement? Because I could swear I'm shorter, but it's I don't know. I thought it was just Wait, something fun. Weren't you still dressed up as Yuna at that too? Yes, I was. I was dressed up as Yuna each time I met all three of them. So that's how they kind of know me. They're like, Oh my god, we met. <laughs> we Yuna. met Yuna. <laughs> we met the actual Yuna, the real live Yuna. That's her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't see how that's possible. I didn't have all of the nope, accessories you know. to it. But you know what? I did a good job on the costume, I think. Are there any highlights that anyone had for PAX? Like one thing that really stuck out? Uh, like best thing? Uh, in mm. terms of like thing, like physical thing, I'm going to go with Oculus Rift. Oh um, yeah, God. I, I got to try it out. And I mean, I've heard uh-huh. of the hype. I've heard the hype and I've seen people use it and stuff being like that. But it, it just kind of actually one of the indie developers actually had one, which I was quite surprised. So um, mm-hmm. there was an indie game there called Estes, and it was a side scrolling uh, type beat em up type game. So you have to move from left to right, um, just attack and stuff. But he had an Oculus Rift. So it's pretty cool when you you put it on. You know, if you want to look at the guy to your left, like you have to look at the guy to your left. It is just so I- I- immersive. And it was pretty awesome. And then I used it as well playing Hawken, which that um that robot. Oh, you gotta play Hawken? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the robot fighting oh, you type jerk. game. Yeah. And Hawken mm-hmm. was way different because you moved using the joysticks, but if you moved your head around, you can see inside the cockpit. Uh, so <laughs> in terms of like physical things that, that really stuck out, I'm probably never never gonna forget is the Oculus Rift. Um, you know, they mentioned it in the TGS podcast, how it's going to really change the way stuff is played. I mean, I believe it. Uh, it's really going to change how people play a lot of games. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. going to give people a lot more neck muscle. 
that's your, that's your takeaway. Well, okay, that's that's great. They're gonna throw away their gym memberships. I don't need this anymore. I can just play video games. I'm gonna all day. get my buffed up neck. My yeah. my gears of war buffed up neck from from Octopus Rift. Octopus Rift, by the way, is not a game. It is the technology used to play the game. Oh, that's right. Just I'm sorry. For those who need yeah. clarification, it's a big goggles. Mm-hmm. It's a big pair of goggles. Well, all you can see is the game. It's yeah. awesome. It's incredibly immersive and disorienting and amazing. All right, guys. Well, that was our, you know, PAX 2013 roundtable, if you will. Um, there's a lot of stuff we mentioned. You know, there's a lot of stuff we didn't mention. But uh, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter. We're probably going to be talking about it for a little while now. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop us a line, Facebook and Twitter, or right. even on a YouTube video. All right. Well, thanks again for stopping by, guys. And we'll see you later. Take care.